So you're a starving artist in need of some serious cash. Or maybe you're a Photoshop pro and freelancing gigs just aren't cutting it anymore. Well, you're in luck because your specific skill set makes you the perfect person for one of the world's most sophisticated crimes. Counterfeiting. Sure, you can steal art or jewelry or even rob a bank. But why jump through all those hoops to get your hands on cold hard cash when you could just print the money yourself? The Federal Reserve prints money every day. What's a few more dollars thrown into the mix gonna do? Anyone can steal stuff, but making money is an art. It takes finesse, sophistication, way above the common everyday criminal. So becoming a career counterfeiter is obviously the only logical route. But just like any other crime, the bigger your operation, the bigger the punishment if you get caught. Counterfeiting money takes skill, patience, and lots of planning. One mistake and you're screwed. It's the reason why there are so few counterfeiters left in the world. But for someone of your caliber of skill and your sheer desperation for cash, well, counterfeiting may just be your most lucrative career ever. So let's learn how to counterfeit money. Theoretically, of course. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please don't counterfeit money. I'm not gonna beat around the bush here. Counterfeiting is hard. To get anywhere close to the point where a $100 note you printed passes for the real thing, even under dim lights in a busy bar, you're gonna need a lot of information. Up until 1861, counterfeiting was extremely easy. There was no standard dollar, and every regional bank printed their own version of money. Around 1850, there were more than 10,000 different notes in circulation. So to counterfeit money, you could literally walk into any shop with some Monopoly money and tell them you got it from the bank down the street. But then the government took over the money printer, and the design of money became standardized and regulated. Suddenly, it was a lot harder to make good fake money. Counterfeiting is so tricky that only about 0.1% of the cash in existence today is fake, compared to almost half after the Civil War. Today, bills have dozens of markers and unique characteristics that can be checked to spot a fake. Newly printed bills have color shifting ink, watermarks, a security thread that glows a different color under UV light depending on the value of the notes, which makes counterfeiting money today about as hard as it is to fake a piece of fine art. One missing line, the cash not having the right feel, or the security thread doesn't glow exactly as it should, and you are done for. Taking all of this into account, if you can choose which bills to counterfeit, going for the ones printed before 1996 is your best choice. They have fewer safeguards, which make them much easier to forge. You'll still have to focus on the blue and red threads woven into the money fabric, the watermark, and a flawless design, but at least you don't have to worry about the UV glow. So once you know your product inside and out, and you have a clear idea of how to counterfeit it, it's time to look for a workplace. The US Secret Service is in charge of finding people who try to counterfeit money, and they know exactly what type of equipment you need. Which means in most of the US and Europe, the printers, ink, and other materials commonly used to make fake money are all on the watch list. Buy them and you're probably going to be on that watch list. So when it comes to counterfeiting, you may need to take your operations overseas. Choose a country that's close enough to the US so you can easily smuggle the dollars in once they're printed, but also choose a country that has really bad infrastructure and a corrupt police force. This way, you give yourself the best chance to buy whatever you need without attracting suspicion. Once you've chosen your country, your best option for a workspace is somewhere rural. A barn, warehouse, or old factory are all great options, as long as you're not trespassing to avoid drawing attention. The best printers for counterfeiting can be pretty noisy, so choose a spot far away from other houses. Once you've found the perfect location, you're ready to find your crew and gather your equipment. To print money, here's what you'll need. A printer, obviously. Ideally, you will want to go with an Italio printer, which is what real dollars are printed with. 
Unfortunately, they're super expensive and almost impossible to find. Unless you're in North Korea, who actually managed to get their hands on one and started printing almost exact copies of the dollars called super notes. But you probably don't have that option. So the next best thing is called an offset printer. Almost like an intaglio printer, an offset printer transfers ink from a metal plate to a rubber sheet and then onto the paper. Next, you're going to need paper, and not just any paper. The unique 75-25% to ratio of cotton to linen is the real reason why money feels the way it does. Any good counterfeiter will tell you that the texture, size, and weight of the money is what usually gives it away. The paper dollars are printed on also have red and blue threads woven into them at random. If you can't replicate this or buy it from the only manufacturer in the world, called Crane, your next best bet would be to bleach existing money and print over it. In South America, some great counterfeiters use Venezuelan banknotes, which thanks to hyperinflation are worth $0.000002 each, a great arbitrage. They would bleach them and print right over them with a new dollar value. The security thread is the next thing on the list. Get the security thread with the right words on it and stick it in between two layers of thin money paper. When someone lifts the dollars to the lights, they should be able to see the security thread in between. Lastly, you'll need the right serial numbers. For banknotes printed before 1996, a special letter is used before the actual serial number. Find out what the letter is according to the year you're trying to replicate and use that. Now that you have most of the equipment ready, you're gonna need a crew. No matter what the movies tell you, counterfeiting takes a lot of work. You need an artist to engrave the metal plates, a forger to make sure the engraving is accurate, you need a digital designer to blow up the pictures of the notes for the forger and artist to see, you need delivery guys, lookouts, printing supervisors, and meals, the people who are going to smuggle your freshly printed money into the US. You'll also need to be on quality control. If one note looks wrong, it could bring down your entire operation. So keep your eyes open and don't accept any mistakes. Once your team is assembled, you can get to the hardest parts, actually printing the money. Now that you're ready to go, you can start your printing operation. There's a lot of things to watch out for at this step, like checking print quality and gradually starting to launder your fake money in exchange for the real deal. Watch our video on money laundering to learn how. Don't use the first notes you print. Chances are they're not perfect. And today, anything other than perfect is unacceptable. Once you've printed enough money to actually be worth something, it's time to find a buyer. One of the safest ways to get rid of counterfeit cash is to sell it and make it someone else's problem. If you printed $1 million, prices will be around 30 cents on the dollar. That means you can make a good, clean $300,000 if you sell to the right guy. As long as your buyer doesn't turn out to be an undercover cop, you're golden. But if you're not interested in making less than half of what your dollars are worth, you could take it into your own hands. From your workshop, smuggle the money into the US using couriers, people who smuggle contraband. Once the money reaches America, where there's a lot more confidence in the dollar, you can use the money to make small purchases in places like clubs, bars, or shops, where the staff seems friendly and the lights are dim. Pay with a $100 bill, and if you bought something for $10, you get $90 back in real reusable cash. Sure, it's a lot more risky, but if you don't hit the same shop or mall twice, you should be fine. Whatever way you choose, if you've been working for a while and a buyer suddenly shows up out of nowhere, ignore it almost every great counterfeiter has been caught selling to an undercover agent. Once you've got your network running and the literal money printer printing, it's time to sit back and enjoy the good life. <laughs>